my grandfather, he's 73. My grandmother is 65. And their health is bad, but they're really good Christian people. We had had the boys uh, several different times. Their mom and dad had separated, and they were on the street with their dad. I was only with my mother the first five years of my life. And then she left. We were with our father until I was 12. He would get on drugs and drink alcohol and uh, not have a job, and he couldn't feed them. We were sleeping under bridges. Sometimes we ate, sometimes we didn't. It was like that. I guess he would get to feeling guilty and he would call us and he would get us to come get the boys. And he got them this last time. It was worse. So I had to go get the bo both boys that night. I was praying and Jesus answered my prayer that I would get to go live with my grandparents. There are grandparents, uh, Craig and Kathy, real active members. Craig's a deacon and Kathy's been our music director. And I knew that they deeply loved them and wanted to take care of them, but I just knew financially and health-wise they, they wouldn't be able to. The boys were getting out of hand. They were rebellious because of what their dad was doing to them. They were having nightmares. Thomas was crying out at night, wanting his mom and wanting his daddy. Their work wasn't good in school, and it was because of what they were going through. So my pastor went back to Dr. Blackwell, and people were there down at the Mills home, and for some reason, they all gathered together, and, and that very day, I had three calls, and I had my boys in Mills home in two days. When John and Thomas first came, they were in Bright Brown Cottage, and it was in, I believe it was June, and then a couple weeks, and they transferred over to our cottage. The way I felt is that I wasn't going to come here. Like, if I was going to come here, I was going to run away. That's how I felt about it. But when I actually got here, I was not, I was actually kind of happy. A lot of our children that come to us right now have been the adult. You know, even 10, 11, 12 years old, you know, they're taking care of their siblings or they're taking care of the house. And when they come to us now, they're able to be a child. I felt uh, kind of mad because I didn't want to leave my mama and papa. So then when I got here, I knew that it would be a good place for us that we could still call our mama and papa and family members. What's so awesome is you have kids come in and some of them are so angry when they come in and to see a child come in that angry and to as the more they, they stay and they learn about Christ and they, they learn when they're here to see them change over time to see that anger start to dissipate and, and go away. And you see the fun-loving child that was underneath all that anger. That's, that's what's so awesome. Thomas is uh, very spunky. He don't meet a stranger. No, he doesn't. He's a talker. He is such a gentle soul. And uh, you can't help but fall in love with him the minute he's so full of energy. Riding bikes, doing basketball, baseball, soccer, and football. Now, when we, if we go down there and spend the night, we get, get their stuff and get it back to their cottage. We have to hunt them down to tell them bye. We can't find them. You get to go to the pool, the gym, and you get to go to churches. And I like going to different churches, getting to speak, getting to hold the signs, walk up. My favorite verse is Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The only time we see change is when we have Christ in us. And so we always point them to Christ. We always point them to the only way to salvation, and that's Christ. And as they, they start to see that, and as we do our devotions, as we go to churches, as we do our Bible studies, you see this child who came in knowing nothing of Christ to all of a sudden realizing, hey, 
that Christ is the answer. It's not about me, it's about Him. I like going to the church over there, and the pastor's really nice, pa Pastor Randy Stewart. I like it to go up singing because it's joy to my heart to sing to God. My favorite um, Bible verse is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever should believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. It was just a blessing to have them both here um, and just to hear some of the background where they come from and now that, that we get to minister to these kids and just show them God's love and let them have a roof over their head and a warm bed to sleep in, not having to sleep under a bridge. And I mean, he's, he's told us several times how thankful he is to have food every day on a daily basis. We get three meals a day, two snacks, and we are fed really well. And we also have authority figures, like a, we call them house parents, but I think of them as my mom and dad. As house parents, we're, we're seed planters. We rarely get to see the flowers bloom in the cottage, but we hear about it years down the road, and we see it with the relationships that we've built with these kids. That relationship with them really is the most important thing and making them feel loved. We're not only being a lot for these children, we're being a lot for their parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, you know, the people that we're reuniting them with, we're sharing that hope that they'll be back home and we're sharing also the love of Christ. I've heard of the Baptist Children's Home, but I hadn't seen nothing like that until I went down there and saw for myself just how they were treating these children, how they were doing. It just amazed me. It makes me feel good yes. because I know they have accepted the children's home. And I know that we have done the right thing. They're doing great. I mean, they are doing great. Uh, the, just being with Thomas, uh, you know, the past year, being able to see him grow into the young man that he is, being able to watch him ride a bicycle and build relationships, not just here, but at school. To, to see him turn into the young man he is today and see each step of growth in him as a blessing straight from God. Uh, he is a typical happy nine-year-old little boy now. And it's just great to see that, to see the smile. His smile is infectious. It really is. So when, when he looks at you and he smiles, it just melts your heart. I like to go home because I get to go places with my papa. Like he'll sometimes take us fishing or to the park or something to play. I always like to see them come home. I like to do do with them. I like to take them to the river. One time I caught a large mouth bass. It was around one or two, three, maybe four inches. We uh. Let them shoot the bow or play with the bow, you know. Just enjoy spending time with them. When I see them now, they seem to be so happy. And uh, from all I can tell, they love everything about the Baptist Children's Home. Thomas told me, he, he said, Mama, he said, I hope you won't get your feelings hurt, but you're probably not going to get to see much of us because we're going to really be busy this summer. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas himself, Thomas and Jonathan, they don't just have the support of, you know, alumni and Bright Brown Cottages or BCH in general. They do have the support of their grandparents and um, their church, their local communities. It's just amazing to see uh, the churches and the North Carolina Baptist Children's Home coming together to further the gospel, to change lives, to give hope to all these children who, when they come in, they've lost all their hope. They don't have any. And through the gospel and through the Baptist churches working with us, we're able to provide that. We are coming together as one, as one whole, and supporting these two, these two young men, you know, and lead them, hopefully, into an awesome adulthood, you know. I'm going to stay here until I'm about 22. I'm gonna go through college, get me a car, get me a job, and get me an apartment. 
And then after that, I'm gonna try and start working at Baptist Children's Home.